teaching your dog to use the treadmill is, is pretty simple. It's very straightforward. The one basic rule of thumb is when you're doing this, like they have to be up here to learn. So don't let them back up. Like they're going to try and back up. They'll see this and they're like, I'm not going to go up there. You could try putting them on there when it's not moving. You could try, but it's not going to make any difference because once you turn on the belt, a lot of dogs flip out. So make sure that you're using a leash when you're doing this. Any, any type of dog training, you should be using a leash. And this especially. So you're going you're gonna to use the leash, put the leash on the dog. The other thing that's important about uh, teaching your dog to do the treadmill is they should have basic obedience. You shouldn't be trying to train your dog to do this if your dog isn't really proficient with sit, heel, down, whoa. All the dogs that I'm going to use, uh, all of them have been on this at least twice. Some of them three times. And I'm sorry, I've had some technical difficulties. I live streamed this and my pigeon went on my keyboard last night after it was edited and rendered and deleted it off of YouTube. It sucks, but that that's just how it is. So I'll, I'll try and explain. I have one dog that's sort of still uneasy about it, a couple of them. One of them's Billy the Hedgehog, and he didn't want to come up on it at all. And when I brought him over here, he was backing up, and then when I put him on there, his legs were all out, and he was really uncomfortable. He's still uncomfortable about it. So this will be the third time. But you'll see each time you do it with the dog, they start getting more comfortable comfortable about it. Don't be wrapped up into the emotional state of the dog because the emotional state of the dog is nothing like yours. Like what emotional state? I'm being serious. It's nothing like you. They don't ponder thought. They don't. They respond. And it's a lot of muscle memory. So if you get them up here and get them walking and you're controlling them with a leash, it's muscle memory. Just keep doing it. And then it becomes second nature to the dog and the dog's just you know gets up there and will walk now the other thing is is when you're doing this you want to use discipline so the dog can't just like get on and off it and you should be in the room don't tie the dog on here i mean if you're right here you could take sure but you know you should you should be working with the dog this isn't something you're going to train the dog oh look i'm not going to have to do anything with the dog i'll just put him on that no 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 Work with the dog. Train the dog. You should be in the, the, the same proximity. You should be right in the same room. And when they're first learning this, you have to be. You you know, your dog is not going to learn this unless you're um, uh, right there with a leash on the dog and you're telling the dog no. So what I'm saying is if your dog is trained and your dog understands no and, and basic commands and you're training them to do this, it might go pretty good. But if you're like, oh, that looks like fun. I have a, I have a treadmill. I'm gonna, it might not go as smooth as it, it's going to go for me. And also remember, most of these dogs have done it twice. This will be their third time. When, when you first do it, they're sort of sort of wigged out. Okay, so just just keep sending that message message to the dog that that's what you want the dog to do. You want the dog to get up there, you know, and walk. And that's the command that I'll use is walk. Let me go get one of my dogs. Tonka, this is probably his fourth time doing it, I think. Come on, walk. No, walk. No, you're cheating. No. Walk. Good boy. No, don't bounce. Walk. You know, a lot of leash flexing with all the dogs, which is this kind of motion. Reminded them that I have the leash on them. No, don't sniff pirate boy. This dog drives me crazy. He does. It's a lot of energy. This is the most hyperactive dog I've ever known. No, walk. So he's at one mile an hour. We probably won't have him go any faster than this for a while. Maybe a little bit. Let's try. It's almost a mile. It's a mile and a half an hour. Probably a more comfortable speed for him. That's pretty good. He's getting it. Now, besides this, putting that there, you could you could you could put a board there or something. And you could also put boards on the side. Stop. 
You could also put boards on the side so it's more of like a cattle chute in there. You could do that. I'm, I might alter this thing. I probably will. Neil. Marty. Marty has done it as many times as, as Tonka. And the first time that Marty got on here and I started it up, he got real barn sour and just sort of like jumped in the air like it's jumping out of his skin. It's no big deal. I, I kept Marty on there and made sure that, that Marty was doing it proper. And he is. He's getting it. So, Marty, walk. I'm going to start it up. Walk. Come on, buddy. Walk. There you go. There you go. See, it gets a little, little barn sour, but not bad. Come on, buddy. Come on, Marty. Good boy, Marty. Come on, walk. I want him to walk up closer towards the front because he's going to fall off if he does that. Here, walk. Good boy, walk. That's the command we're using is walk. 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 Good boy, walk. He's doing it. Let's give him a little bit more speed. Walk, Marty. You're fast. That's a mile. That's one mile an hour, Marty. Come on, walk. What? There you go. Now you're talking, Marty. Move them little legs. Move those little legs. Good. See, you got to have a leash on them. Look at Marty go. Good job, Marty. Look at how cute that freak is. You look ridiculous, man. You look ridiculous. Keep walking, brother. Here, up here, buddy. That's good, Marty. Nice job, Marty. Good boy. He's going over a mile an hour. Good boy, Marty. Yeah, he's good at this, actually. He's, he's doing real good. Marty, you got it, dude. Yeah, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, Marty. Get up there a little bit farther. Yeah, there you go. Now you're talking. Look at that little freak run. Come on. You're like a little gerbil. I'm going to make you a gerbil wheel. It'd be easy to make Marty a gerbil wheel. Good boy, Marty. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy, Marty. Nice job, dude. Beautiful. Beautiful job. That's pretty good, dude. Heel. Oh, my fly's not open. Here, come here. It's a big fear of mine, like my fly's open and I'm live streaming. I don't, I don't, I don't wear underwear. Who wears underwear? Well, yeah, I am. I'm wearing long underwear, actually. Hang on. Marty, Marty's being a baby. I got to tell Marty to be quiet. Jules is, he's wearing to get up here. Jules is, um, he's, he's, he's not hyperactive. He's not like Tonka. He's not like uh, Marty. M Marty's not hyperactive. M Marty can get real excitable. And um, I don't know if hyperactive is the right term. But he, he's real excitable where Jules is much more mellow. And he's just sort of like, oh, I'll get up there and walk. So this is the third time Jules has been on. And it's pretty similar to the first and second time, not too far off. You know, he's walking up there. He doesn't seem stressed or anything. And he's just picking it up. It's muscle memory. So if I just keep putting him up here sooner or later, he's going to be doing this good. Where, like, see, see how he's, he sort of stops and then legs to the back. And he starts walking again. So I keep telling the dog to go forward by using leash flexing in a forward motion like this and say, walk, walk, good boy, walk, walk, good boy. You're doing it, dude. Yeah, Jules, you're great, man. You're doing great. Good job, buddy. Walk. That's good. Walk. See, if there were sides on each like this, it'll give the dog less options. So if I take a board, make it more like a cattle shoe, it'll be easier, easier you know, for the dogs, it's more obvious that, you know, that they don't go anywhere. Do you need to do anything like that? Do you have to alter it? No. No, I just might, though, just to make it a little bit easier for, you know, a dog, like, that's early in a board and train or something. I want to get him going on this. Look at him. He's doing great. You're doing good, Jules. No, walk. He's, he's definitely getting it. This, by the way, is $200. I, I bought it on Walmart.com. It put I put it together in about ooh, I don't know 20 minutes, something like that. It's pretty easy. Good job, good job, Jules. You're doing great. Good job, Jules. Very nice. Very nice. Good boy. 
keep the sessions short when they're doing it at first. That would be true with anything. Anything that the dog's learning, keep the session short. If, if you think that it's going to help condition the dog to make it longer, what you're going to do is you're going to make it worse. You're going to, you're going to bum the dog out. Just sort of, you know, finesse the dog into what you want the dog to do. Don't try the heavy handed approach that, that just doesn't work. You want the dog to have a good attitude about what it's learning to do. Take your time, be thorough, take your time. I'll go get um, Billy the Hedgehog. He was the one dog that really had an intense reaction to it. Like, I don't want to do it more than the other dogs. Like all of them were sort of, all of them will be sort of like, no, I don't, this dog kind of went up there. But generally speaking, they don't want to do it. They're like, fuck that. I'm not going to do it. Billy has to do it. So let's see if, um, see, this sucks because I had that, I had this on video and then Remy deleted my video, but, um, you'll still see sort of still uneasy about it. He was dancing around this and I had to pull him up on it. Don't let your dog sit there and, you know, mull it over or whatever they're doing. Just get them up there and get them working and don't console the dog saying it'll be all right or anything like that. Just get up there and do, do it, dog. Don't worry about if the dog doesn't like it. You're training the dog. You know, if they don't like something, you train them to like it. That's it. Don't use food. Do not use food. Heal. All right, this is Billy. And... This is the dog that, like, really didn't want to do it. It, do, it doesn't matter. I want him to do it. Billy, get up here right now. I'm not going to even, like, get up here right now. I'm not going to even, like, mess around with him sniffing or whatever. I'm just starting it up, and you got to do it. Dude. Turn around right. Turn around right. Walk. 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 You're doing good, dude. There you go. There you go. You're doing it. No, you're not getting off. This would be an example of a dog, why I had that ladder there. He would jump through. I could see him doing that. And I, I'm probably going to put a board there. No, man. Walk. Walk, dude. Walk. You got this, dude. Walk. Come on, walk. You got it. Walk. Walk. No. Walk. You're doing good, man. Walk. Good board, dude. You got this. You got it, brother. I see your tail wagging. See, I'm seeing that the, the tail's starting to wag. He's starting to see it's not that big of a deal. Good boy, Billy. Good boy. Yeah, you got it, dude. Walk. Walk. Good boy. No. Walk. No, walk, dude. Walk. Good boy. Sit. No, Billy, sit. Don't be freaked out. Um, he put his paw off the thing. That's a no-no. If the dog's going to do that, say no. If they jump off, get them back on. Don't don't spend any time. You know, just get get the dog on there as quick as possible. That's that's the only way that they're gonna. They're, it, the the more they think about it, they're not thinking. The more the more they're in that situation the worse it sort of becomes. So just get the dog functioning. I'm going to put him up there again. No, here. One more time, Billy. You got to get over this, brother. Come on, tough guy. Well, he ran up there this time. Here, walk. And there's less pressure on my leash. Come on, walk. He's sort of, he's sort of a retard, aren't you, Billy? A little bit. He's, no. See, if they turn around, they can't do that. No. So direct them with the leash. Walk. You're doing good, dude. Walk. Keep it real slow for Bill for a few days. Come on, walk, dude. This was worse. Um, this whole, like, going to the back. He's starting to get this, like, this is the game to stay on it. No, walk. No, walk. Get on there, brother. Walk. No, walk, dude. No. Walk. No, walk, dude, walk. Walk. No, walk. Walk. No, walk. Walk. No, walk. Come on, walk. He's doing something that a lot of them will do, which is here. Is they'll, they'll try and sit down. Don't let them do that, you know. Uh, forward motion with the leash. No, walk. He'll get it. He'll get it. With the dog that is crappy at it at first, 
let's do shorter sessions, more sessions, shorter sessions. Okay, go get, go get it. You, this dog could end up being great at this. Heal. This dog, uh, I think all the dogs that I'm doing this with have e collars on. But the first time that I would do it, I'd probably not have an e-collar on them. This is true, just because they're my, the collar, like if they're backing up and you're pulling forward, the, 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 the regular, the buckle collar or whatever I'm using might hit the, the e-collar, which isn't good. It can cause problems and you don't want to do that. You don't, you don't want to cause any problems. So I'm not really teaching anything with the e-collar. Uh, that that I use for conditioning. I don't use it to um, teach the dog anything other than like maybe boundaries or um, food. Like don't eat food. Like chicken wings off the street. Oh, they know how to do it. They know how to do all the commands before I start using an e collar. Here up. Now spin around this way, dude. This, this this guy was sort of weird at first, and 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 Bruce sort of picking it up. No, no, walk, walk. You got it, dude. Walk. You got this, man. You got to walk, walk. Let me move the camera. Come here, dude. Good job, buddy. Walk. It's good, dude. Walk. No, walk. That's good, bro. Walk. That's good. You're getting it, dude. You got it. You got it. You got it. You got it, dude. Walk. Walk, buddy. Get up there. Huh? Come on, Bowser. You got it. There you go. Walk right on, dude. The Mr. Bowser. Bowser. Walk. No, walk. You got this, dude. Walk. Walk, Bows. You got it, dude. Good job. Keep walking. Keep walking, brother. You got to walk. Look at Bowser's feet. They look ridiculous. You look like a Muppet, dude. Walk. You're doing it. Walk. Walk. Come on, buddy. Walk. Walk, Bows. You're doing great, man. Walk. No, no, walk. So sometimes they'll like start sitting down. Don't worry about it. We're he's on a mile a minute, but um, we could we could bump him up. No, he's not on a mile. Now he's on one mile a minute. Let's see if raising the speed if he's like, yeah, that helps. So you have to figure out the speed with them. Um, don't go too fast. You're gonna have to uh, move it up and down. Like this is a great speed, one mile an hour. Is perfect right now for him. He's doing Bowser. You're doing great. That's great. See how he's just sort of walking pretty normal. No, his tail isn't tucked between his legs. This is sort of walking normal. It's not wagging, but he's not. He's definitely not freaked out. Look at how loose the leash is. Come here. He's got. There's the tail wagging. I guarantee you, he will be. You will be wagging your tail, won't you, brother? Yeah, you're doing good, buddy. You're doing real good. Good job, Bows. Good job, man. Good boy. Very nice, Bowser. Come on, Bows. Good job, dude. Just stop. So he's cute, though. I look at I look at his face. I look at Marty's face. It's sort of like looking at Lola's. It's ridiculous. Or Jules. Jules. Jules reminds me of a marmoset. I look at him. That's that's what he reminds me of, a marmoset. I miss the haircut that he came with. That fucking stupid groomer. He looked fucking awesome. He had like a fucking giant softball head, soccer ball or something. Like, looked really. Look at this guy. This guy's really getting it. Bows, you're doing great, dude. No. Walk. You're doing great. Walk. No, you got to walk. So you can't pet him at the same time because he did, yeah he doesn't have this down yet. No, walk. I pet him and start sitting. No, walk, walk. No, walk. You're doing good, dude. Now let's raise it up. Good. Take him back up to a mile an hour. That seems like a good like a good speed for him to learn on, or even just to walk on. 
Yeah, that's great, Bows. Nice job. Keep walking. You're going to fall off. You're trying to speed up a little bit. You can give him a little direction, like going forward. Okay, let's let's slow this down a tad. Let's slow it down to one. That was 1.1 miles an hour. Come on. They're up here. Up here. Brother, encourage the dog to come to the front of it. Because if they're back there, they might, they might fall off, and then they're going to nothing which is off and that's not the game and it's 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 a lot of muscle memory keep walking bows you got this brother come on up here uh, man this is a little bit too too fast i have it down to point eight come on bows we'll stop. it's it's a lot of muscle memory it is with everything even with human beings so like if, if you're um practicing a sport of some kind it's all it's muscle memory you practice 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 until you get it right i did a uh wrestling camp when i was a kid with this uh wrestling coach from uh his name's dan gable he was a um olympic gold medalist you, you know this guy's amazing and he was always preaching that like practice the move and practice it again and again and again until it's a second nature that's how we learn and that's that's how they learn too but that's like a real physical thing we're cerebral they're not we think about shit we ponder thought i can visualize i could visualize stuff before i was going to wrestle i'd visualize what i was going to do they can't it's strictly muscle memory that's it you just do it over and over again with the dog and the dog starts picking it up if Bowser was a goat, this is true. If Bowser was a goat, he could learn to do this too. If Bowser was a pig, I could teach him to do this too. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Animals, it's all about muscle memory. A horse, a pony, a cow, whatever it is. You might not get a chip to do it, but something with four legs. You, you bring them up here and you get them doing this, and then they're doing it. It's muscle memory. So you can, you can train your dog to do this, and it, it really is relatively simple as long as the dog has training. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be flat out with you here. I've never, had a, I've never trained a dog to do this that had no training. So I don't do that. I don't do a la carte because it doesn't go good. The last time somebody contacted me and said, I want you to train my dog, but I don't need them to train you to train the dog to do sit or whoa because they do that real i'm like what oh yeah oh okay but then you're describing all these these behavioral problems but your dog sits good you're, you're describing a dog that's non-compliant and you're telling me you tell it you're telling the professional how you think the dog should be trained it's absurd it's absurd it's all muscle memory with the dog it is it's all muscle memory with the dog if you if you Bowser, sit. If your dog doesn't have any training and you think that you're going to train your dog to do this, why? Why don't you get your dog sitting real good? Get your dog to do heel real good. This this is not this is not important in the grand scheme of things. This would be just another thing that a dog that is doing a board and train is going to learn. If a, if a puppy came here, the last thing I would be doing is putting the puppy on the treadmill at eight weeks. Why? They have to learn sit down, walk well, here, heel, kennel. They got to learn hold, drop, and to retrieve. Why, why would I waste time, time with this? This is something that you add in later. I would consider it advanced training. As far as I'm concerned, I'm going to start putting this into my board and train, but I'm not going to, I'm probably not going to have them doing this like for, you know, if a dog comes, it's going to be a couple of weeks before I start putting them on the treadmill. They have to be responsive. They have to understand the basic commands. This, is, this helps, yes. Anything you train the dog to do helps. As long as you're using discipline and you're not training with, with food, this is going to help every dog that's doing this because I'm making them be compliant. Oop, here, walk. I just got this. That's good, Bows. Do you understand? Anything you train the dog to do is, you know, within reason, is going to be helpful to the dog. 
don't train with food. Th this, this could be a very positive thing for the dog. It's about them doing it right. Are any other dogs doing it right? No. Now, one dog that, that I've hit up here is doing it proper, but they're doing it and they're walking on it. So half half the battles, half the battles be. Now we'll move on and keep doing it until they're really doing it proper. Take your time with it. The dog tries to back up. The dog tries to back up. You might try something like this, pulling them on this way. If your dog can do place between the legs, you might even try that. You might get the dog between your legs and turn it on, right? And have it have them like this. Like, no. Walk. Walk. See, but my legs being here, he has less options. It's, it's like the um, stop. It's like the partition that I was talking about. Like if there were like like little sides on this, the dog would have less options. Dude, do you need to go to the bathroom here? You get good. You get good, man. No, sit. Okay, Ken. Oh, I got 